In this video, we're going to show you how to create timelines in PowerPoint. In the desktop version of PowerPoint, there are two different models for timelines that you can use, and in the online version, there is one. We're going to start by clicking on the Insert tab. Timelines are a type of smart art, lots of graphics and graphic organizers in here. So we're going to click on Smart Art. What I don't like about Smart Art is there isn't a search here, but what I do like is there are categories, and as you hover over them, it does tell you what they are. So here's our two varieties of timelines, circle accent and basic. Makes sense to start with basic, so we will. Notice that as soon as we come into basic, uh, we now have a smart art design showing up here. For a brief moment, there was a text box on the side here. I'm not sure why that went away, but all we have to do is click right here for text pane to make that reappear. So we have three pieces of text here. This would be event number one. Keeping it fancy, here's event number two, and finally event number three. Now you do have the ability to demote an event. So if I choose event number two, I can demote it. And what that did was it made it sort of a sub event of event number one. So this could be a larger event like World War One. This could be something that happened during World War One, whereas this is another large event like the Great Depression or World War II, or whatever you need. Uh, if this was a plot diagram, then you could have your five stages of plot being your main events, and then underneath of those, you could list details. You can demote, you can also promote and make that uh, top level again. That has moving up and down, that refers to left and right. So up to the left, down to the right. Uh, this left, right actually means reversing everything. And you can also add bullets. So right now I have event two selected. If I choose to add a bullet, it adds a sub-level event underneath of that. If I choose to add a shape, that actually adds a top-level event. So adding a shape adds a top-level event. Adding a bullet when an event is chosen adds another item underneath of that event. This is not the only choice you have for format. Uh, you do have lots of styles up here. So you can click here to see all of them. So some are 3D, and it's kind of nice if you hover over them, it shows you what it will look like. And then some are 2D. You can also change your color patterns. And in addition, if for some reason you want to color code these, then you can select that item and fill it. And you have all the options that you have for any shape in PowerPoint. So you can fill it with an image, you can fill it with gradients and textures and pretty much any color of the rainbow, and then some. All right, so that is the basic timeline. Let's go ahead and add another slide, and we'll go back up to Insert, back to Smart Art, back to Process, and we'll try out Circle Accent Timeline. So this one also opens without the text pane, but if we click on Text Pane, here it is again. Main difference here is instead of having the subsets underneath, they can actually have their own space. Example I used earlier, this could be World War I, this is events during World War I, but they each get their own spot on the timeline because they don't all happen at the same time. This could be our next major event, the Great Depression, World War II, and again, events of World War II didn't all happen all at one time, so you can still list them chronologically. And this one makes it a little bit easier to do the color coding because you have a major event with things related to it. So I can, again, right-click here, choose format shape and choose a color for these. So everything under this major event can stay one color and then everything in the next event could be a different color. You can of course close this at any point and reopen it when you need it. And the rest of these controls are all the same. Once I select an item, um, I can choose to reverse everything by going right to left. It's clicking on the text that allows you to move things up or down. Clicking on the shape does not. So it's the text that matters. The shape is just there as sort of a graphic highlight. Again, adding a shape. In this case, it adds the same shape that I currently have selected. And adding the bullets, as you can see, is not an option no matter what I select. Because adding a bullet in the basic timeline added the sublevel event. But that's accomplished here by choosing a sublevel event and adding shape. So that is how you create timelines in PowerPoint. 
And like many of the things that we cover, if a timeline is going to be part of your larger presentation, then you can create it here and leave it in your slideshow as part of a larger slideshow. If you simply are using PowerPoint for the graphics so that you can create a timeline and export it somewhere else, then just click on File, Export, Change File Type, and choose Ping or JPEG, depending on how high quality you need. Ping is much higher quality, but also a much larger file. If you're going to be sharing this with others, uh, JPEG might be a better way to go. Once you choose Save As and determine where you want to save it to, it then asks, do you want all the slides or just the one you're working on? So if you are creating in PowerPoint in order to export somewhere else, then you just choose the one slide that you created here. Okay, so that is Timelines in PowerPoint. Hope you've enjoyed this video. You can subscribe down below as well as find links to my blog theotherit.com, and my book, All the Microsoft Tools You Need to Transform Your Classroom. Thanks for watching.